this is the family farm that I, I live in and farming since 1983 myself, um, seventh generation. On the day of the incident, uh, it was a similar pillar like this, but it was down in the middle of the farm and uh, it had been knocked by the contractors that were cutting silage a few months earlier and had always said, I must push it out of the way. And in this particular day, it, 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 it definitely was in the way I needed. I said, I couldn't be bothered going up for the, for the tractor to, to take too much time. And I wanted to do this quickly. I had bent over with my back, I hadn't bent my legs, I hadn't, I hadn't done the, any proper procedure for doing anything. So I tried to turn it. And of course, as I pushed forward, then it wouldn't give. And I pushed a bit forward more. And when I felt the, the tear, I felt the, the back heat up and I felt fierce perspiration. that the sweat poured out through me. I walked back up very gingerly, I might have to head back up to my wife to say that I really felt I was after doing damage to my back. The injury I did on the day was, was I, I actually pushed out the sacroiliac joint and it's the joint that's there in, on, 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 on between your hip and, and the backbone. The pain was, was, was un, just unbelievable and I couldn't, couldn't do anything. For a, f a few years I couldn't even possibly run 20 steps without feeling as if, as if my, actual, my back was actually inflamed. It's what's called a chronic injury, in other words, that it, it's well over five years. It's actually nearly 19 years since I first had it. Over the years, uh, there have been plenty of periods where, where literally I have gone too far and uh, was out for, for three or four days. The financial impact has been quite substantial. The, the real crux was that when it came to calving cows then, I literally I had to get some else every time. I just wouldn't be physically able to have done it myself. And th that was... Uh, huge, huge uh, drawback. And there was a cost in, in, in paying someone else to, every time to do it, to give you a hand two or three times a week or whatever. When you're young, you, you, you think you live forever and you don't think of these things. You say to yourself, why would I bother doing these things? Just aren't I well fit and able? Health and safety is for everyone, no matter if you're three and 93. Definitely and my advice at this stage would be to, to everyone to just take a few seconds just to say, how am I going to lift this? Do I, do I have to lift it? Do, can I get a machine to lift it? And if I have to lift it, how do I do it? By using your legs to lift rather than your back to lift. You keep the object as close as you can to your body and you actually turn your whole body so that you're actually not twisting your back. When you lift something and then you twist your torso around, I suppose you're putting one bone on top of the other and instead of just pushing up, now you're actually twisting them and you're bending them sideways. And I mean, if you, if you did that to anything, you, you, you'd break it. The changes I made in the farm to compensate injury was to really try and mechanise as much as I could. Use the machine when you have to. Use the machine when you have to. There's no need to, to do the lifting. There is. The, the loader is there if you, if you have something to lift, that you just get the loader and you're tired on with the chain. Farming is a very physical activity, but the day that you get a pain, that's the day that you have overdone it with your back and you've done something more than you should have. Your body never should be in pain doing any work. Farmers have a tendency to tear into work, and you can't afford that luxury of saying, I'll just tear into this and it'll be fine. Because that only 10, 15 seconds could be the saviour of an awful lot of discomfort.